back to what I told you in the speech. This is what the Prophet ﷺ told Muad ibn Jabal to do. When he appointed him as the governor of Yemen and he sent him down, he said, I'm sending you to the people of the book, Jews and Christians. <laughs> Teach them Tawheed. Let them understand the true meaning of La ilaha illallah. And that's what the companions had to deal with for 13 years. They didn't get into these intricacies of fiqh. They didn't get into the divisions of how you work with and dividing up the different kinds of zakah, inheritance. This wasn't the issue. The issue was what? Tawheed. La ilaha illallah. There's only one God to worship. And how do we understand that? By the way, if you want an easy website to really explain Tawheed, really make it easy for anybody. Many priests and preachers have already come to the Islam from two websites that we use. GodAllah.com that's got the Tawheed covered. And the other one which compares Christianity to Islam called Islam Code. But both of these are at our main website, shareislam.com, S-H-A-R-E-I-S-L-A-M.com. <laughs> Next question. Somebody asked if we believe in the same God, why do I need to be a Muslim? <clears throat> We already discussed that, really. You can love God, but how do you know you're going to be loved back? But let me make it real easy. I want to make it easy for people to understand. Because if you start quoting hadiths to them, they're not going to understand that. They don't even know what a hadith is. If you start breaking down words out of the Quran to them, that's not going to make sense to them. They don't know Arabic. Muslims are even starting to say things like, well, you know, we all believe in the same God. Why can't we just get along, live in peace, let me get my degree, make some money, have a big house, and we'll all be a la di da di da <laughs> Yes or no? And you know that's true. That's what's happening. So I want to make this so that it's clear, crystal clear. And I give him the example of the little boy who comes into his mother and he says, Mama, I love you. I love you, Mama. And she says, You know what? I love you too. But will you do something for me? I'll do anything for you, Mama. Okay. I want you to go out in the kitchen and I want you to wash the dishes for me. Because, you know, my diabetes is acting up. My legs are swelling. I can't stand out there and wash dishes. Will you please go wash the dishes? He's gone for a while, and he comes back. I love you, Mama. Did you wash the dishes? Nope. But I brought you some chocolate candy. She's diabetic, remember? She says, I can't eat that. He says, I know, but I can. And I got a good deal at the store. So he eat the candy. Does he love her? Or he loves himself? Next day, Mother, I love you. Will you please go out and mow the grass for me? I have hay fever real bad today. I can't go outside. It's killing me. He leaves. He comes back. Did you mow the grass? No. But I brought you some flowers. <laughs> and she's got asthma. Huh? She said, get that away from me. You know I can't be around that. He said, I can, and I like these flowers. Who does he love? Yeah, and that's the same thing for anybody who say they love Allah, but they don't want to follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's not reciprocal, and Allah is not going to love you back. Because you have not loved him on his terms. His terms are a complete and total love that has nothing else in it whatsoever. It's mentioned in the Bible in the Old Testament. It's mentioned in the New Testament. And it's mentioned in Islam the same way. Unless and until you reach the level where Allah is more to you than anything in this earth or anything in the universe, you have not submitted when you can find anything on this planet which you take over Allah, you are no longer considered as a Muslim. 
Allah orders you to do something, you do it because He ordered you. He orders you not to do something, you don't do it because He ordered you. And you don't change His religion. Because if you do, you'll be the lowest of the low in the next life. This is mentioned in the Bible. This is mentioned in the Quran. This is clear from the monotheistic religions. Allah has one and only one way for salvation and redemption. It's to believe in Him as one, to make tawbah to Him, to repent to Him, and to be sincere in it, and to leave off sinning as much as you can. It doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. We already know that. But it does mean you're going to try your best. And you're going to also apologize and ask for forgiveness when you make mistakes. And you're not going to pass your mistakes off to somebody else and say, He died for my sins. You were responsible for what you did, not somebody else. And if you believe in God, and if you're trying to please God, and trying to obey His commandments, then you're already in Islam anyway. Even if you didn't know what it was. So you don't have to change, you just have to make some corrections. Like I did. Many Christians are so close to Islam, they just need to make some corrections. Straighten out the Aqidah. Straighten out some of the actions that they do. Leave off some things they've been doing. And then keep going with the enthusiasm, the excitement, and the dedication they already have to Christianity. And Prophet ﷺ said that the Christian that comes to Islam has double reward because they believed in Jesus and then they believed in Muhammad and the message with which he was sent. Double reward. But who hears the message? and rejects it. And this is in the tafsir of Wamam Yabtagi Gairul Islam Adina. The tafsir explains that the Rasul Sallallahu said and it's in Sahih Bukhari that whoever hears about me and this message from the Jews and Christians and they don't accept Islam they will be in the fire. Once you've made it clear you've understood it you no longer have any option except to hear and obey. The two things that begin the story in the Bible, begin the story in Quran as far as the first human being, Adam, alayhi salam, are similar. Adam and the devil. The devil was ordered to do something. What was he ordered to do? Bow down. Make sujood. Did he do it? No, he refused to do what Allah ordered him to do. Yes? That was it. That was the only thing he did wrong, wasn't it? But he refused. Adam was ordered the opposite. Don't do something. Don't eat the fruit. Did he eat it? Yes. Did he repent? Yes, yes he did. He made Tawbah. Did the devil repent? No. Will he ever repent? No. no, it's already known from Hadith. He never will repent. That's the reason the devil is going to hell. It's not because he didn't make the sajda. It's because he won't repent afterwards. Nobody's perfect. Adam wasn't perfect. Devil's not perfect. Could the devil be forgiven given if he repented? Don't answer unless you know the source of this one. Say, I don't know. But if you know the hadith, then you can say, yeah, I know. There's two hadith. One, it's uh, talking about Moses, and the other one's talking about Isa alayhi salam. From these two hadiths, we know that Jesus asked, and Moses asked Allah about the subject. And Allah is willing to forgive even the devil. Even Iblis can be forgiven if he will just go to the grave of Adam and put his head down and say, Astaghfirullah. If he will do that, Allah will forgive him. But he won't do it. You know what he said? He said, if I wouldn't do it while he's alive, I'm sure not going to do it after he's dead. It doesn't matter, and Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi said it himself, it doesn't matter how much a person has sinned in the past. Even mountains of sin, but if he brings la ilaha illallah and sincere tawbah to Allah, he really is sorry for what he did, Allah can forgive it.